it was a very dark period, and I could have very easily just taken the money and gone off and done one of these really terrible movies. Um, and uh, I don't know what that would have done for my career, but um, there's, you know, when the times are hard like that, you simply have to say, this is what I want to do. I want to make my movie. I don't want to take the money. Whose virtue signaling and empowerment campaigns are actually veiled attempts at market development? Corporate studio executives. In case you missed part one of this series, I placed a link in the description. Welcome to Galactic Initiative. I'm your host, Jeff. Hollywood has become an echo chamber for an increasingly pompous entertainment industry. Los Angeles, one of the most stratified exclusionary metropolises, ironically peddles morality to the world. Contrary to popular belief, virtue signaling from the Hollywood Hills, Malibu, Venice, and other surrounding areas began long before Ghostbusters 2016 and The Last Jedi, but its intensity and scope have recently spiked. Why? In part one, I joked studio executives would promote the Canadian seal hunt if it generated revenue and good press. The truth, I believe, isn't far off. As you consider Hollywood's plunge through the 20-teens, which, let's be honest, is undeniable at this point, you might conclude corporate studios are full of activists, people who view their roles as missions or mandates for societal change, not customers' enjoyment. You would not be wrong. In addition, you might conclude studio executives wish only to collect bonuses and increase shareholder value, not produce classics of the age. Again, you would not be wrong. However, those conclusions appear to indicate activists and executives find themselves at odds. Well, you might be surprised to discover alignment. Executives must approve and finance the output of their studios. They market and distribute the activism that gradually alienates all but their neighbors. Also, they staff their studios. If they were displeased with projects and or employees, they would make moves. Executives are fond of firing contentious subordinates and saying no when it suits them. Ask George Lucas. I think for most creative people, they don't like others looking over their shoulders saying, you know, why don't you make that green? Why don't you make that blue? Well, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? I don't like that. Don't, don't put that in there. You know, I want to, um, you know, it's sort of like Michelangelo and the Pope in terms of doing the Sistine Chapel. It's a very irritating thing, and I'm sure Michelangelo is very irritated with the Pope. And so you get, you try to get yourself into a situation where you only have to answer to yourself, where you can ask advice of people, you know, and sort of work with your peers and, and mentors and things to try to do the best job that you can possibly do. There's nothing worse than the frustration of having somebody who you feel doesn't get what you're doing trying to turn it into something else. So why does the plunge continue? In a word, greed. Executives want more than they can possibly attain. With one production, they strive to attract every demographic, age, gender, race, nationality, etc. The proliferation of PG-13 films, a topic for a future video, is one example of such greed. They would do well to remember the old expression about can't please all of the people all of the time. Yet they took certain segments for granted while pursuing new customers. Here's an obvious example to connect the dots. You probably know women buy and spend more than men. In 2009, the Harvard Business Review published an article explaining women controlled 4.3 trillion, or 73%, of U.S. consumer spending. It concluded, as a whole, women represent a growth market bigger than China and India combined. In response to women's escalating consumerism, corporations avidly shifted their sights from men to women across all genres. Feminism's decade-long rise in entertainment seems, through this lens, nothing more than a win-win money-making scheme. Sure, studios produced superhero sci-fi and fantasy epics, but executives altered the formulas from male-centric to female-centric. The protagonists, the storylines, they assumed men were loyal to certain genres, but if they could interest women, they could develop their markets and more than double revenue over traditionally male-dominated fare. The decisions weren't sparked by high-mindedness. They were motivated by economics, pure and simple. Unfortunately, Leadership wishfully miscalculated based on potential earnings. 
reality has taught a harsh lesson, and Star Wars fans have suffered of late. According to Forbes, in 2021, women controlled up to 80% of U.S. consumer spending. So I don't expect studio executives to change their goals anytime soon. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Check out Galactic Initiative for all things Star Wars. Galactic Initiative is not authorized or endorsed by Lucasfilm Limited. The name Star Wars and all related materials are registered trademarks of Lucasfilm Limited, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, while rights reserved. Galactic Initiative is a registered trademark, and other product and company names are trademarks of their respective holders. Use does not imply affiliation or endorsement.